going on guys? You're watching the Hungry Handgunner channel. I'm Nick. Now lately I've been doing a kind of survival themed approach. Uh, this isn't intended to induce panic or hysteria, things like that. But there are people with the current situation kind of thinking, you know, if this goes really bad, what do I do? And I've been focusing on firearms. Uh, my firearms channel, a lot of people are running out and buying their first gun in a long time or their first gun, period. But I see some stuff on social media that kind of shows that a lot of people don't really understand the tenets of survival. They don't understand just how complex that is. It's more than just shooting bad guys that come for your stash of Twinkies. Um, there's a lot more to it, and there are a lot more risks than people realize. So today I'm going to be going over the top 10 things that will kill you in a survival situation. If you're rapidly thrust in a survival situation, just think uh, vehicle crashes in an isolated stretch of road or aircraft goes down and you survive or stranded at sea, the number one thing that's going to kill you is going to be exposure to the elements, whether that's extreme heat or cold. Uh, both of those can and do kill people every single year. Relatively easy to mitigate if you've prepared your mindset and skill level to do so. Uh, so I would look into just basic things, making sure you've got at a minimum those little, those little space blankets that pack up in a tiny bag and you never get them to go back in if you take them all the way out. They're cheap and they're good to keep around. Uh, you throw four or five of them in the car if you're going on a road trip or a carry-on bag. Uh, I've never heard of anybody having an issue flying with them but they can potentially give you all sorts of advantages in a situation. You can use them to collect rainwater for getting your hydration in. They're worth it, in my opinion. So having the means and mindset to build yourself a shelter to get out of those elements is going to be important. Um, stateside, you know, if things were to finally hit the fan, like everybody seems to talk about, being able to find shelter or make shelter will be important. Uh, you don't always know that you're going to be able to stay where you're at. So we'll go with that. The number two killer in a survival situation is going to be dehydration. Uh, as a society, we are much less self-reliant than we were decades ago or a century ago. And if you go back in history, you see that the concept of pure drinking water wasn't really well understood 100 years ago. or didn't seem to be. So there are all hosts of waterborne illnesses that can either worsen your dehydration or kill you. So, and usually by worsening your dehydration. Even living in beautiful wilderness, North Georgia here, uh, I'm not going to run and take a drink out of a spring without making sure that water is purified first. There's a whole range of ways to purify water. Everything from the very simple build a fire, boil it, let it cool, drink it. Uh, that's a good way. It's a very easy way. Most people understand that, I think. A lot of people live in places where there are boil water advisories. That being said, if there's any sediment in that water, you're likely still going to ingest it unless you have a, a strainer of sorts set up to get all the sand and grit out. Relatively harmless to ingest, mind you, because all the bacteria and viruses should have been killed off through boiling, but can affect the taste. Iodine tablets will do the same thing. They'll kill any organisms in the water, but you're still going to have any of that grit and sediment. Water filtration systems like Life Straw or the bottles with a built-in filter in, they work well, they don't last that long, relatively speaking. Uh, those filters clog up, degrade, etc. There's also, I've got an MSR thing that screws on top of an algae bottle, a little hose goes in the water source, you pump it. It takes a little while to filter your water, but it filters out sediment, viruses, and bacteria. Very effective and it lasts a long time. That may be something worth looking into. I'll throw a link to that in the description. I don't make any money off this stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to help you guys out. I was trying to figure out how to rank these. Uh, so if you disagree with how I'm listing them, that's fine. A lot of this is going to be situation dependent. But for the next one, I'm going to go with infection. Something relatively minor, as we exist now, can absolutely kill you in that situation. I want you to go through your head and think if there were no more tetanus boosters, if there were no more uh, urgent cares or hospitals, you could get messed up pretty bad pretty easily. Even a broken arm or broken leg could easily get infected and kill you. So some level of first aid knowledge will be helpful. If you go out and you get some wilderness first aid, wilderness lifesaver, 
uh, instruction and experience that would be even better. If you're going to spend a lot of time in the backcountry, uh, whether things hit the fan or not, I think it's important to get some of that baseline knowledge if you're going to be out, you know, for all intents and purposes in a survival situation. So uh, wilderness first aid is definitely something good. It happens to be a name of a Boy Scout merit badge, but there are more uh, other things out there, other options to get that training, if you will. Starvation. Uh, starvation will kill you. You'll feel like you're dying long before you're actually dying, but uh, it, it can and does kill people in the wilderness. Familiarize yourself with what is edible, what is poisonous in your area. There's all sorts of things out here that you can eat just by getting it out of the ground. In addition to things like fish and meat that you hunt or catch. I would urge you to do some research into uh, whatever is local in your area. Make sure that if there's an animal that's potentially not safe to eat, if you don't take a certain part of that animal out, uh, learn about that animal and learn what you need to do to prepare it. This is probably getting pretty detailed for some of you, but it does kill people uh, that get stranded in the outdoors, so I wanted to bring it up. There's a whole host of things that you can eat, grow, catch, hunt, etc. if you need to. So uh, learn about that. A lot of that stuff can be done by you know, printing and stuff off the internet or having your phone with you if you have cell signal and going for a, a walk through the woods near where you live or getting a book online, which may be the best long-term option because if it does hit the fan, you're not going to have your cell phone or internet. Pre-existing conditions. Now this is a huge topic and we're just grossly going to oversimplify it. Um, for instance, I have high blood pressure. Will that kill me in a survival situation? On a long enough timeline, I'm sure it would. However, there are a lot of lifestyle changes that would go into living in a survival situation and that may rectify itself just a little bit. So by virtue of not being able to sit around, because survival takes work, and eating better, that may resolve itself. Now, granted, I'm relatively younger, so when you start getting older, those pre-existing conditions like that that seem relatively minor can be catastrophic if you don't have the supply of medication that you need. Also things like diabetes, if you don't have the insulin supply, uh, you know, and there's not a whole lot that you can do to remedy that because you can only stockpile so much of this stuff. So if you have a pre-existing condition that is, I'm trying to figure out how to put this as uh, sensitive as possible, that is something that you can rectify on your own. Uh, I would urge you to possibly think about doing that if survival is something that you are concerned with. If long-term viability in a post-fecal matter on the fan world is something that you find yourself thinking about, limiting your reliance on modern medicine, modern things like that, modern maintenance drugs to keep you going will be beneficial or finding homeopathic alternatives that work. Uh, this is not speaking to the effectiveness of those. I'm just saying you know, there may be something that works for you. There may not. Falls. Not waterfalls. Well, I guess technically it could be a waterfall. Falling. Uh, you can get hurt pretty bad with a fall, right? Imagine if you were to fall and break your leg now. What's going to happen? Well, you're probably going to go to the hospital and you're probably going to get your leg set. Maybe have surgery if needed and get a cast and then in a while you'll be just fine in an ideal world. <clears throat> If you are, say, foraging along a rock formation in a survival situation and you fall and break your leg, things are a little bit different. Uh, there is no hospital to go give you some pain medication and wrap that in a nice cast for you and everything's going to be just great. The limited mobility and potential infection from that injury could kill you. Not to mention that you might just die outright if your injuries are bad enough. There is no uh, air rescue coming in for you. There's no trauma care waiting for you. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the wilderness first aid, but also more don't take stupid risk in a survival situation. What could be solved with some pain pills, stitches, or a cast now and then laughed about later will absolutely end you in a survival situation. So falls. Animals. Now it seems like people either don't give this enough thought or they overblow it to the extent that it's just comical. Now, bears typically want to leave you alone, at least the ones down where I live, or black bears, and unless you get between a sow and cubs, they're going to just leave you alone and go about their business. Uh, loud noise they don't like. So, And if they've been fed by humans a lot, they tend to be a little bit more adventuresome, uh, adventurous coming up to you 
So there's a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, bears, things like that are going to try to stay away from you. What can kill you be bee stings if you're allergic, or scorpion stings if you're allergic, or bad spider bites, or even a relatively minor spider bite that you scratch and pick at and then it becomes infected and now we're back to infections. And you know there are things like venomous snakes, some of which are again overblown. Most people that get bit by a copperhead are going to be alright. They're going to have some pain, some swelling, be uncomfortable, they'll probably be okay. Unless you have a very adverse reaction to it or you're very elderly or very young or you get bit in the neck or something like that. But then there are other things like rattlesnakes or cotton mouths that can cause such a reaction that can be fatal completely on their own even now if you don't get to medical care in time. So animals, uh, learn to respect them, learn what's around in your area. Uh, do you good to just kind of read up on their habits, things like that. Even things that we don't think of as dangerous, a lot of us don't, like deer. You catch them the wrong time of the year, look like the wrong thing, or smell like the wrong thing, they can kill you too. Carbon monoxide poisoning. So you can find a news story, I guarantee you, uh, somewhere near where you live, probably somewhere fairly recent, where an individual or a family has passed away due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Seems avoidable, right? Seems simple. It is, and it's, all, it's not talked about as much as I think it should be particularly in a survival situation where you may find yourself without your electric heat or out of propane or whatever and you try to you know heat your family heat your home uh, using alternative methods if you don't have the right ventilation you can die so living where I do uh, it does get somewhat chilly here in the winter to me uh, definitely cold enough for a coat and cold enough to have central heating it's not as big of an issue here as it may be, say, someone in Minnesota or North Dakota. There are absolutely valid chances that they could freeze to death. Whereas here, you know, you bundle up tight, you're going to be uncomfortable, but you'll probably be just fine if you're out of the elements and you have enough layers on. So do some research into methods of heating your home other than depending on the power grid or a gas supply. That might be a wood-burning fireplace or wood-burning stove. Look into proper ventilation if you don't have those things and you have to do something else. Just learning about the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning might really help you out. In a survival situation, your worst enemy may potentially be you, especially if things have gone from normal to catastrophic in a very short amount of time. You may have lost people you care about. You may be cut off from people you care about. Probably will be cut off from people you care about. Your entire existence will be flipped on its head. It's kind of happened to a lot of us with the coronavirus thing, but not to the extent that I'm talking about here. You know, we still can stay connected on technology. We still have lights and running water and, you know, life goes on. We're just doing it at home and some of us have taken a pay cut. But things aren't catastrophic for, for those of us who quarantined or uh, furloughed or whatever. So in a survival situation, your own emotions, your own mental state can kill you worse than anything. After a series of setbacks trying to get food or make shelter, you can start dealing with depression. If you're completely isolated, you could start going insane. So some of the things that I've read and was taught in some survival courses are going to be just keep track of the days. Just make a hash mark on something that can help you uh, find some way to keep a record. If you don't have pen and paper, then figure out some way to maybe scratch something on rocks just to give yourself the engagement of taking yourself out of first person view for a second and putting that stuff down uh, that can help you you know a guy on castaway tom hanks made a little companion out of a soccer ball <laughs> i don't know how well that works but just being mindful that uh, that can be overwhelming you know we we don't typically go through changes like that overnight so in a survival uh, environment, if you run across books, things like that, they may not seem worth it at the time, and they may not be worth it at the time, depending on you know, your situation. But consider grabbing one. It may help you, you know, keep that fine line between sanity and insanity. So, And don't give up. There's always another day, another chance to succeed. So again, this isn't a super in-depth uh, guide to survival. These are just things to think about. It's going to be up to you to prepare yourself for any of those eventualities on your own. Uh, I'm not saying that, oh my God, the end is near. Maybe, it may not be. You know, we just never really know. Take it one day at a time. Try to be as prepared as possible. 
I will drop some good resources in the description for you to check out. They're going to be uh, from a range of sources that I find credible based on my experiences and my training, if you will. And check those out if you're interested. Uh, a lot of things about survival you can learn from a book or just by having the book to refer to if that situation arises. The biggest thing is going to be mindset. You have to be willing to power through it and make it back to a normal state of environment uh, to maintain stability or achieve stability. So with all that being said, I hope this presentation is for nothing and that nobody ever needs this information. We all carry on with our first world problem lives, worried about bandwidth and the drive through line of fast food places. That would be nice. Or ammo availability. But I've covered that enough on survival topics. So stay safe, guys. I hope everybody's keeping your sanity. I'm going to be trying to get more videos out to you before I go back to work. And then I will continue to upload regularly even after I go back. So... Hope everybody's doing all right. I'll talk to you later.